Hey y'all, it's Ashley at Bookish Realm and I am here with a, another video. So as you can see from the title of this video, these are 10 popular books that I will never read. Now this was the April Patreon pick of the month and I of course didn't get it up in April. A lot happened between that time. Y'all know, took a break, whole nine, whatever. So here we are doing it. You get two of these this month because I'm also going to do the one for May. And I'm going to preface this video by saying that these are books that I don't want to read. I'm not going to tell you not to read them. Or if you love these books, I'm not going to shame you. These are just books that I do not plan on reading because I have either lost interest, there's stuff about the author that I just can't get down with and I personally don't want to support them, or there is content that I'm kind of weary about that maybe I feel like I can't handle. So just want to kind of get that out the way while you're here if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video so let's go ahead and jump into our list the first one on this list is going to be red queen by victoria avr so i have nothing against victoria avr or the red queen series as a whole i think that a lot of people in booktube have enjoyed it i think that they ate it up when it came out i think that Victoria, from what I remember, I think that Victoria Aviard was always pretty vocal on her Twitter, her platforms, whatever the case may be. I am not a fan of possibly going and reading this book at any point in my life because I feel like Red Queen is very reminiscent of like the YA dystopian period that we got in the, you know, early to like mid to not mid that would make no sense but early like 2000s um into like 2010s ish type of thing and i just am not vibing with that it's not that i don't like dystopian but i feel like those books to some degree were very formulaic and they start to kind of feel very similar and red queen first of all reminds me a lot of the selection and you know with the one this blood type this blood type and you have to do x y and z and it's really just not my thing anymore i think that it has to have a different flair to it in order for me to enjoy it that's not to say that these aren't good books that people shouldn't read them but i think i'm kind of past the point of really truly being interested in picking these books up i know that people love them i know that people have said that they've been done very very well i remember when the last book came out and everybody was so hyped and so buzzed over it and i just never was interested and unfortunately i'm still not interested so yeah the next book that we have on this list is is the Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan and let's just go ahead and be transparent this is on the list because I just can't get down with Emily Duncan I think that she has done some interesting things via social media that I am not okay with you know there is a thing with people making mistakes, but then there's a thing with continuous behavior that I don't know if you're really being apologetic for it at that point. And there were some instances before the last major blowout where she was saying some not so great things to her followers. And I think some people were calling her out about some stuff and her justification was basically like, oh, my teams don't follow me on Twitter, whatever. I get you having your personal life, but she was standoffish stand in a way that wasn't drawing a line, like almost like boundaries. She was standoffish in a way that was very almost nasty in some ways. So I didn't appreciate that. Then come to find out that she was bullying members of the Asian bookish community and creating fake profiles to bully people and calling other authors ugly and it's awkward because you write books for youth and you are a youth services librarian and there's just some things that i just would not expect for a person to engage in with those roles especially with bullying you know a lot of what you services librarians do is to create safe spaces for kids to shelter them from bullying and i don't understand like how you engage in bullying and then tell your kids not to bully or create safe spaces 
to protect them from bullying so it's weird to me it, it's it's a very weird situation and i just i had no interest in the book before when it initially came out it got a lot of buzz i didn't care then and now this definitely made me feel like i definitely don't care now the next book that i have on my list is more so content and it's my dark vanessa and this one deals explicitly with the relationship that existed between a girl that was 15 and i believe her teacher that was in his 40s and i have heard that this book is dark like really really dark and i don't know if i can do it i don't know if i will be able to stomach it so for me it's one of those books where i'm saying like I don't think I'll ever read it. That may change. This is the one book on this list where it may, it may end up being a situation where it changes, but right now it's a definite no, because I think it'll, it's just gonna be too much for me, which is surprising because I know that for a lot of people, you know, y'all say, oh yeah, you love books with like darker content and books that kind of tear you apart, but this is one that I don't think I could do it y'all. I, I, I genuinely don't think I'd be able to do it. The next one that I have on this list is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. So there's a two part explanation to this one. The first one being that this is a spinoff of Fangirl. This is the fan fiction that the main character was writing in Fangirl. This is the actual story. My least favorite parts of Fangirl when I read it was the fan fiction that we got to see. So because I did not like the fan fiction then, I wasn't going to like the fan fiction now. And then on top of that, Rainbow Rowell has done some things that I don't necessarily agree with. I think that there was some representation issues in Eleanor and Park. People have constantly talked to her about those representation issues. And to my knowledge, they still have not been addressed. And, you know, if you did something wrong and people of the community are telling you that the representation is inaccurate, at least acknowledge them. But just to flat out ignore people, man, like that takes some guts. So that's a no for me. The next one on this list is Caraval. And I know that a lot of people love Caraval, like the entire like trilogy of books. The books are beautiful. They got a lot of buzz. A lot of people enjoy them. But y'all, I had Caraval on my shelf for like two years. I remember when I first bought that book. I've unhauled it since, but I had it for so long and I never picked it up because eventually as time went by, I realized I'm not interested in this. This wasn't written for for me. I'm I'm not the target audience for this book in terms of like the storytelling and and the plot of the book. Like I just never maintained interest in it. I would look at it and I'd be like, "Oh, I need to pick this up." And then eventually I just got to a point where I was like, "I just don't really care. The premise isn't exciting me anymore. I'm not engaged with it." I don't need it on my shelves, so I unhauled it, and I don't see myself ever reading this book. It just, there's too many books in the world for me to read than to stay attached to a book that I probably am not going to end up really enjoying. It's going to waste my time completely, but I know that people enjoy it and people have loved it and have said that it's a great trilogy. Next on this list, I have Aurora Rising, and I added this one on this list not because of Jay Kristoff. I'm going to talk about Jay Kristoff in another another book, but Aurora Rising, I added to this one, and I could have actually uh, added the Illumina, Illuminae files to this too, also not just because of Jay Kristoff, but I think I've come to a point where I realized like, YA science fiction is probably not my jam. If I want to read sci-fi, I'm going to have to go adult. I just have not really found a YA science fiction book that I enjoy. I know Bethany and I from Beautifully Bookish Bethany talked about this on her podcast a while ago that the marketing behind YA science fiction also isn't good and it doesn't really help the situation but I just don't think I really like YA science fiction. There's a couple here and there. I think that um, Brandon Sanderson's Reckoner series is a science fiction-esque type of story that I do enjoy but for the most part yeah the rest of why is I, I I just I don't care and Aurora Rising got a lot of buzz a lot of people loved Aurora Rising when it first dropped I was not one of those people who like 
clung to it or was like oh my gosh I have to read this book and I had never read anything to this day I've never read anything by Amy Kaufman or Jay Kristoff so I think that in itself too was like there are not two authors that I was checking for at the moment so once again I didn't really care either way. Now while we're here we can go ahead and talk about Never Night by Jay Kristoff. You can also insert any book by Jay Kristoff. I have never read Jay Kristoff and I will never read Jay Kristoff. I think that he has had enough chances for me personally. Like I said, I'm talking about my personal experiences of things that I've seen. I just, other things that I can be reading besides trying to invest my time and energy and space into this human who is not really considerate of other humans. Uh, he has said some things on Twitter. He has partaken in some cultural appropriation, has made some comments about said cultural appropriation that was not really, it wasn't acceptable at all, and then made an apology that wasn't really an apology. So, you know, I know people are gonna be like, oh, you know, people say sorry, and it's just not good enough for people. Um, well, first of all, you have to realize, when someone apologizes, you don't have to accept their apology. Just because someone gives you a sorry doesn't mean you have to take it. And I think that it is fair to judge someone's sincerity behind their apology. When you keep doing the same things over and over and over again, your apology becomes less sincere. It's almost like he's continuously done things wrong. He's been continuously called out for his behavior. Sometimes he just straight ignore it. Like he ignores it. He won't address it. And, you know, at that point, I'm kind of like, that's that's a tad bit ridiculous especially when it comes down to the cultural appropriation thing he has said things to booktubers that i found extremely appropriate specifically to a black woman that i did not find appropriate at all so yeah not for me it is personal it is the author i am not a fan of him and i don't feel the need to pick up any of his books i am one of those people that's having a hard time right now separating some authors from their art I don't judge anyone who doesn't like or who does who decides that they want to still read these books because clearly whenever these controversies happen there is a spike in sales like people start to read these books more because they're curious about these authors but I'm, I'm having a very very hard time doing that because I believe that sometimes what you're right it does infiltrate how your, your experiences and what you believe. So yeah, that's a different discussion for a different day. But if you can want to continue to read J. Kristoff or you want to indulge in his stuff, like that is your choice once again, because I'm gonna keep saying it because it's important to me to know that I'm not gonna tell you not to read a book because it is censorship for that to come out of my mouth. But just personally for me, like, I just can't bring myself to read anything by J. Kristoff. Next is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And I think this is just a V.E. Schwab, Victoria Schwab thing. Nothing against her in particular. I know that there were some issues with like, or has been some issues with her representation, like having people of color in her books. I've heard that, but I, I haven't done much deep diving into that. I just don't feel drawn <laughs> to anything that she writes. Summaries of anything. I'm looking across the room right now and I have Vicious and A Darker Shade of Magic both on my shelves and they've been sitting there for the longest time and I don't feel any passion to read them. I don't ever talk about them. I don't ever put them in TBRs or my reading plans. I don't ever look at them during a month and say, I want to read those books. I got them both for like a dollar a piece. So that's why they're there. And you know, Victoria Schwab gets a lot of buzz. The Invisible Life of Adela Rue got a lot of buzz. But the premise, like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not interested in the premise at all. Not in the least bit. And I think that's kind of how I feel about all of the summaries of her books like i want them to sound cool and appealing to me but at the same time they just don't they don't sound appealing to me at all so it's not i don't have an issue with her as an author i just don't think she's necessarily like the author for me now there might be a slight possibility of like maybe her middle grade series those do sound interesting, but her why an adult, I'm not pressed. I'm not pressed to read them at all. The next one that I have here is Girl Wash Your Face, <laughs> which 
Um, the author has gotten a lot of interesting <laughs> pushback specifically for the comments that she made via I think it was a TikTok that she did where she tried to compare herself to the likes of like Harriet Tubman and she said things that like if you I shouldn't be relatable to anybody but at the same time she was preaching to people that you know she understood where they were coming from or she understood their experiences because she was just like them it's just very contradictory but I think that that points out the greater issues with like self-help books and I don't know if Girl Wash Your Face was ever really truly popular on booktube but in the larger reading community that book was super popular like very very popular she sold a lot of copies of that book and I think that it just went to show the greater disparities in like who's writing self-help and her making that mistake and still selling millions of copies of books whereas you know you have people of color BIPOC individuals doing the same and they wouldn't have been given the same amount of grace that she was given but I am also like not a huge reader of self-help books to begin with because of stuff like this where you have people trying to sell and it becomes a money-making tool and it's not genuine and I've heard that the book was very very preachy and I just don't have any interest in it <laughs> I don't care especially with that stuff that came up and the contradictions behind some of the things that she was saying via social media it's very interesting because then it appears that this book was solely kind of like a money-making tool and not really a true self-help book so yeah I will not be reading girl wash her face not for me I mean I wash my face but I won't be reading the book and the last one is going to probably piss a lot of people off but it's the starless sea okay listen let me tell you something I have a co-worker who's a big fan of the starless sea and I know a lot of people who love that book but nobody can seem to tell me what that book is about <laughs> It drives me crazy because it is it makes it more intimidating for me so this is not a book where I'm like I don't want to read it because it's it doesn't have a purpose it's one of those books where I'm like I'm scared to read it almost so I'm just not gonna pick it up and maybe that's me like copping out but I'm nervous to read it because I heard that it's just so it's beautifully written but trying to decipher what that book is about is a pain in the backside and I don't want to do that I don't I just don't want to do it I I listen and that book is, is it's a thick book I had it checked out I tried it and I'm just not it's just not for me I don't think I yeah same thing with like the night circus I've heard great things about it but I just had no interest in reading it both of these books are extremely pop um, popular and well loved and apparently well written beautifully written but yeah you know just not one of those books i think that was created with me <laughs> with me my my reading taste in in mind all right y'all so those are 10 books that i will never read 10 popular books that i would never read let me know in the comment box below what are some popular books that you will never read were you shocked by any books on this list are there any books on this list that you have already read as i said before if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications looking for ways to follow me on social media those Links will be down in the description box looking for ways to support the channel those will be down in the description box as well and i will be back with a, another video soon